on the amenities of the occupiers of neighbouring properties. Therefore, these proposals are contrary to policy HS4 of the Wirral Unitary Development Plan. I so move, Chair. Thank you, Dave. Do we have a second for that? Kathy? Thank you. Okay, um, we've had uh, Councillor Addison has moved refusal uh, to this application. Um, we've had a second. Uh, can I, all those in favour of refusal please raise your hands? Those in favour? And no abstentions? One abstention. Okay, that's, re that's carried as refused. Okay, uh, if anybody who's here for that application would like to leave now, you can feel free to do so. I'm just going to move on now to agenda item 5. Apologies, it just occurred to me that I, I may well have a you know, prejudicial interest in this application as so I may you know the applicant, so in light of that, I'll <laughs> come back for the next time. Okay, thank you, Bob. So we're moving on to agenda item 5, which is on page 27. Matthew, can we have a presentation, please? Thank you, three you, Chair. Um, again, this application was subject to a member's site visit on Tuesday. The proposals are in two parts. Uh, the first relates to the partial demolition and conversion of the existing property, and the second phase involves the erection of an extension. The total number of apartments provided by the scheme will be 17. The existing building can contributes positively to the area. It is an example of early Victorian property that retains many of its original external features. However, the building and its grounds are in a considerable state of disrepair. The proposal seeks to retain this important building with its external facade and internal configuration being retained. The development proposed will see nine apartments created within, within the original building, which will form phase one of the development. Phase two of the proposals involves the erection of an extension which would form an additional eight apartments. The existing coach house extension will, will be demolished during phase one. The proposed extension will be set two metres off that boundary uh, with 141A Highfield Road and will consist of a drive through and ramp down at ground floor level giving access to car parking at the rear of the site. The extension has been designed to reflect the design features of the existing villa at 143 and is to be retained. That is to be retained. Therefore, the appearance of the street scene will be seen as a Regency style villa in keeping with the character of the area. The height of the proposed extension reflects that of the existing building being retained and would not appear out of scale in the street scene. Fourteen car parking spaces are proposed within the site. As 17 apartments are proposed, the car parking provision does not equate to one space per apartment. However, the site is accessible by public transport adjacent to main bus routes and within walking distance of Rock Ferry Railway Station. Local amenities are also within walking distance of the site. Given the sustainable location of the site, it is considered that the number of parking spaces provided is acceptable and in keeping with the Council's parking standards. Private amenity space is provided to the rear of the site and soft landscaping proposed along the Highfield Road frontage will mitigate and soften the appearance of the scheme. The proposals represent a good quality development that allows for the retention and refurbishment of a locally important building. The development will not harm the amenities of neighbouring properties or the character of the area and, the, uh, the, and are recommended for approval. Uh, there, is, uh, there are a number of additional conditions outlined on the late list, um, especially in respect of Japanese not read. Uh, there is a qualified petition for rejection. Okay, would the lead petitioner like to come forward? <coughs> no. 
Okay, so what council would like to come forward if you were? If you can just state your name. Yeah. I'm Councillor Warren McLaughlin, Prop Ferry Board, and, um, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening, and thanks also to you and the committee members uh, for taking the time to visit Highfield Road on Tuesday uh, to offer this application in context. Um, clearly as a ward council, I don't object to plans to bring this building back to life. Indeed, I would welcome it, but on behalf of those who have been close by and those who have a stake in the present and the future of this area, I'd like to register our objection to this particular plan. In the officer's report, comment has made that there is a potential in renovating this building to enhance the area. We of course agree with that, but we also suggest that this application misses that opportunity and will actually add to the problems faced by those living in the area. It is obvious that the development will have a detrimental effect on those living next door, that it will result in loss of privacy for them, <coughs> and also the loss of trees is a factor to be considered. But the overwhelming objection is that 17 flats in this space is just too many, particularly when eight will be built in the new extension and the number of people potentially living in the building and using cars will be 26. The application includes car parking space for only 14 cars, with the presumption, presumably, that the overspill of cars will use the road. But given that this is just by the junction with Rock Lane West, it needs to be recognised that Highfield Road, Highfield South and Rock Lane West all have significant traffic management problems which though they have been acknowledged by the highways department, have yet to be adequately redress, addressed, despite requests to do so. Indeed, I've recently made representations on behalf of those living in Highfield South about the speed and volume of traffic there, and I presented a petition of 190 signatures to the last full council from residents in Highfield Road who have the same problems. At peak times, traffic backs down Highfield Road from the junction with Rock, Rock Lane West to Old Chester Road. There is a primary school just the other side of the junction in Highfield South, and congestion and parking on footpaths is already a problem. But the most important point I'd like to make is that this particular area of Rock Ferry has been overdeveloped with flats. If this application were to be given approval in its current form, permission would have been given in the last few years for just short of 120 flats in this area. And when those are added to those in social landlord ownership, Within that same 100 yards, it takes the total to over 200 flats. I understand that planning policy is to increase the number of one and two bedroom units, but surely it should not result in such a high concentration in one small area. A planning strategy that was devised to regenerate an area and bring stability to it has had the opposite effect. I think the reference in the report to building height um, being in keeping with buildings of similar height in Rock Lane West is telling because I think that relates to the height of the three other blocks of flats that have recently gone up there. This has been, until a few years ago, an area of family homes and a very pleasant one too. The flats, the flats that have gone up so far have almost exclusively been brought up, bought up by private landlords and let out on short-term rental, and I see no reason to think that this one would be any different. The whole thing has given rise to an increase in disorder and antisocial behaviour, fly tipping and other environmental problems and drug related activity. It's transformed the lives of those living in this area. Frank Field and myself will meet with officers in charge of developing planning policy within the next couple of weeks to look at the impact this has had on the area and what can be done to address it. But in the meantime, I would urge committee not to compound an already existing serious environmental problem which has been created in this area by adding to it. The point has been made to me that, as the President has already been set in granting permission um, to other flat developments that have gone before, it means that another application should be approved. But I think that's a strange sort of logic which says that having made a series of decisions in the past which have proved detrimental, for the sake of consistency, you must make another one. I hope the committee will ask developers to take this application away and produce a plan which will achieve what we all want to see, one which will genuinely enhance this building and the whole area. And thank you very much for listening to Thank you, Laura. Can I open this up to committee? What? Um, yeah, um, so I went on the site visit on um, Tuesday afternoon and I did find it um, really useful 
if not just to see what a lovely building was behind those trees and they're really overgrown. Um, I absolutely take the point about the overdevelopment of flats in the area. When we were on the bus out with the Long Rock Lane West, there was about at least 10 uh, estate agents brought up all for one and two bed flats. I'm not sure, and I'll look to Matthew on this to guide me, but I don't think that's a planning reason for refusal in itself. Um, I think the site itself could do with redevelopment, as has been mentioned. Um, and certainly without the coach house extension, you know, putting uh, a reasonable number of flats on the site wouldn't, wouldn't harm it. But I, again, I'd, I'd look to Matt to see if there's any reason, reasons for refusal on the basis of there's a lot of unoccupied flats in the area. Uh, thank you, Drew, you, Chair. Um, the council doesn't have a policy against um, flatted development in, in, um, in our own um, It used to have the interim housing policy that sought to um, um, direct uh, particular, types of, uh, particular types of development on the borough uh, to particular areas, but that was um, uh, withdrawn by the council um, two or three years ago. So there isn't a policy that the council could use um, that could robustly defend a reason for refusal on the basis of um, uh, apartments in the area. If, council, if members wanted to move um, along the lines of, of um, concerns about flatted development, then they would have to argue a, a case for a significant change in the character of the area, and that would be detrimental. And to be honest, I, I'm not sure that you could do that in this instance. I don't think that this development goes that far. Um, in terms of, uh, what, what was the other point, sorry? Um, uh, occupancy, unfortunately, isn't a planning consideration. That it's not something that we would be able to take into, into consideration. Dave? Thank you very much, Chair. It was a very beneficial site visit. Uh, and all the property walked and lived in the Bedford Avenue for many years. I walked past that going to school every day. And I walked past that particular building going to school every day in my life like, a long time ago, but I remember it well when I never lived in wonderful buildings and it's nice to see that they're being re-energised and brought back into use and the application that's in front of us I think is one that's worthy of support. Uh, I, I do see where they're coming from and what they, uh, their, their aim is uh, to improve what is a uh, partial delicate building. Um, uh, it's already been outlined, there is no case to argue because we've already got too many flats in the area you can do that. We, we don't have that sort of policy. We, we find it very hard to, to fight that in any case, in any, any way. Uh, we've had this in the past when all the larger houses in Oxton were being turned into uh, retirement homes. We were plagued by uh, GPs because they were inundated with, I not the right quite kind of way to use it, but, uh, Certain areas that were over subscribed by people of a certain age and put a lot of pressure on, on the GPs. We looked into doing that and changing it by only allowing so many in the postcode. Government won't allow it. Government just will not allow it. You can't, you know, you'll, you'll find it very hard. And I'm talking about government of any colour. I've been on this committee for quite a few years now and I've seen this this way. I understand the arguments put by the residents and the board council in relation to the traffic problems, but that unfortunately happens everywhere, and uh, you know it's it's something that we try and address the best that we can and do that. But the policy is the council, uh, the government's policy is this actually could be a flat development without any car parks simply because of the linkage to highways, um, good access to public transport. So by allowing the amount of car parking spaces they do, I think they actually see a problem and trying to address it in the right way. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dave. Denise? Thank you, Chair. Um, as we just discussed with the West Pair one, is there any amenity space that one of the banks would refuse up on the last one? And this is obviously a lot more, which is 17 apartments. Um, obviously not on the <coughs> Thank 
thank you through you, Chair. And just to be clear that the, the, uh, the scheme at West Kirby was not refused on the grounds of any loss of immunity. It didn't fall on the, uh, the reason for refusal. Um, but in terms of this application, um, there is a significant amount of private immunity space here at the back of the site. It is a, as I say, it's a considerable amount. Um, it accords with our, our policy on, on private immunity space. Um, there is also um, immunity space along the, the frontage. Uh, I'm not sure you could argue that's usable immunity space, but nevertheless it is immunity space. But the primary immunity space is here at the back of the site. Thank you. Tom? Thank you, Chair. Just, just to say, 17 properties seems a remarkable density for the size of the plot. Is that consistent with the surrounding area? Or is there anyone in the area that you can see? Thank you. Through you, Chair. Through you, Chair. Um, uh, as I've advised the committee in the past, uh, there used to be a document called Planning Policy and Guidance Note 3 on housing, and that specified um, density limits of no more than 30 dwellings per hectare. Um, though those limits were dispensed with um, five, six years ago, they certainly don't form part of the National Planning Policy Framework. Um, and 17 dwellings per hectare is, is probably consistent with the rest of the density in, in, in this area of Rock Ferry. Thank you, Matthew. Anyone comes? Pass. Thank you, Chair. Just a brief comment, I mean, again, relating to the concerns about traffic and parking is the lack of any cycle storage, bicycle storage facilities within the application. So I therefore I will point members towards condition five and I would hope that that would be robustly enforced, giving uh, people who live in these blocks of flats you know, the opportunity to safely keep a bicycle, use a bicycle, use public transport and then avoid the need to have a car in the first place, which I'm sure uh, uh, the Lord Councillor indeed would welcome. Sorry, Chair, final question. I just want to be as robust on this one as you were previously. Are separation distances going to be met? Yeah. Thank you, through you, Chair. Yes, in this instance, all the separation distances are comfortably achieved. Um, the, uh, the building comes no further back than the existing, uh, the existing building and no further forward than the existing building. So, uh, in terms of what's there presently and what, what, what's there as proposed, um, there will be no difference. And as I say, the separation distances are comfortably achieved. Okay, are there any more comments? No. The officer's recommendation is to approve this application subject to the conditions listed and also the conditions on the late list. Do you have a mover for that? Thank you, Dave. A second to Cathy. Okay, all those in favour of the application? Those against? That's carried. Thank you. <coughs> We move now to agenda item six. Welcome back, Paul. Uh, which is on page 33. Matthew, you can have a presentation, please. This application, again, was subject to a member's site visit on Tuesday. The proposal seeks permission for the demolition of the existing dwelling and the erection of three detached dwellings on the plot. Um, just in relation to that plan on the, on the screen, you can just see the outline there of the existing property, and then three new um, houses that are shown in, in the boulder uh, outline. The existing detached property sits in the middle of a large plot located on Green Lane. The front of the property is some 16 metres from the, in, from the inside curb edge on Green Lane, and its rear elevation is located some 15 metres from the rear boundary of the site. 
The new dwellings follow the building line of the existing property, being built no further forward than the existing house and no further back at the rear of the dwellings. The, the house proposed adjacent to Tangreen Lane, um, so Tangreen Lane is this property here, and this is the, the plot that's adjacent to it, um, is set back from that property. Uh, with its front elevation being set behind any windows on the side elevation of number 10. This ensures that windows at the first, at first floor level will not be obscured or light into that property affected. Additionally, the design of the new dwelling has been designed so that the two-storey elements are further away and the roof slope of the integral garage slopes away from number 10. Existing landscaping and boundary fencing along the shared boundary of number 8 and number 10 Green Lane further mitigate, mitigate against potential impacts. The new dwellings will be located 24 metres from the bungalows at the rear of the site on Hillen Road. Um, so that's these ones here at the top of the screen. Um, and almost 30 metres from properties opposite on Green Lane. There are no windows on the side elevation of six Green Lane that are habitable. Therefore, the council standards for privacy and interface distances are met. The applicant has indicated that existing boundary landscaping is to be retained and a condition requiring the submission of further landscaping proposals will further ensure that the site is satisfactorily landscaped um, with existing landscaping features retained. The street scene is made up of, semi, of, of detached and semi-detached dwellings with different design approaches. The proposed development will subdivide the existing plot into three. However, the resulting density and plot sizes will reflect those on the opposite side of Green Lane and adjacent roads such as Barmouth Road and Helen Road. The proposed dwellings are considered to be acceptable in terms of their scale, layout and appearance. Off-street parking with integral garages and driveways is proposed for each dwelling. Uh, the proposals are recommended for approval. An additional condition relating to the closing up of the existing access and the reinstatement of the foot line, uh, footway is outlined on the late list and there is a qualifying petition of objection. Would the lead petitioner like to speak on this? No, is there a ward councillor? Let's be to come forward. You can just state your name for the minutes of this as well. Thank you, Chairman. I'm uh, Councillor Leslie Rennie and I represent Wallace C. Ward. I mean, I'm not a regular visitor here to the planning committee, but it's interesting sitting here and listening to previous board councillors, and it's quite obvious really that there is, <coughs> excuse me, I keep losing my voice this week, it's quite obvious really that there is this hunger um, from a certain element around the borough who are just trying to overdevelop, in my humble opinion, of any piece of um, open space or, or land which where they can have a uh, property demolished and um, I think it's a real shame but clearly that doesn't come into planning legislation as far as this application in my ward is concerned and I suppose I may count myself a little bit lucky because the proposed development is nothing like the previous two that we've heard. However, saying that, um, it clearly does have, in my opinion and the opinion of a number of the residents that I represent, a huge impact on the area. And I do appreciate that um, you know this item has been taken out of a delegation and I also appreciate the time that the committee members took with officers to come and visit the site. I think it was yesterday we all, we all were there. But um, I, I'd just like to reiterate really um, what a number of the um, objectors have said and also those who signed the petition together with representation from all the civic society in relation to this. Yes, it is a great shame that a substantial house is going to be demolished and again, you know, I realise that doesn't um, affect any decision by the planning committee, but clearly from what residents have told me of my own observations representing that area now for many years, um, it clearly, in, in our opinion, would really be um, something which would cause overdevelopment of that site from one substantial building to three properties being built on that particular piece of land um, and particularly as well that residents have actually acknowledged that they feel that the three-storey construction of some of those buildings would clearly impact quite dramatically on their daily lives and the peace and quiet which they are hopefully um, able to enjoy in the area. The particular residents from Hillen Road which is at the rear of the properties 
they are bungalows, as Dick quite rightly says in the um, in the item here detailed. And they are quite concerned about the loss of light because they feel that the properties, if they were to be constructed, would heavily dominate the, the rear of their properties. And again, as it states here in the report, that Green Lane is uh, designated as a primary route. It's heavily trafficked at all times of the day, but particularly about the times of day when children are accessing and um, leaving um, the nearby Greenies Primary School. It is an extremely busy road, and there has been some uh, quite serious accidents along there. So in the view of myself and those people I represent, we feel that two additional buildings on that side, with obviously residents accessing and leaving the property at all times of the day and night, but particularly in the day, could only exacerbate the problem that we already have on that road as far as the, um, as I say, the heavy trafficking of it. Um, also, the potential loss of trees, those of the committee who actually came along will see that at the moment the site is uh, surrounded by very fine, substantial trees, and I would hope that there wouldn't be any loss of the, of the number of those trees if, in fact, this were to be agreed. So, uh, for those reasons uh, alone, really, I would ask that the committee give consideration to not allowing this development um, to be agreed here tonight, and I would hope that you may consider rejecting the application. Thank you, Nessie. Can I move this to committee for comments, please, Paul? Thanks, Chair. Yeah, first of all, apologies. I wasn't able to make the site visit due to work commitments, but obviously, uh, having represented the area for a number of years and living there and doing know the area very well, and, and often uh, do drive up and down Green Lake. And I think it's a fairly iconic building. I mean, what, what Leslie just said in relation to the application is a classic garden grab, isn't it, really? Which this committee is seeing all too often these days. It's something I intrinsically don't like, but I understand it's something we can't refuse on those grounds alone due to planning law. However, you know, listening to the previous application in relation to overdevelopment and uh, being realistic, obviously it's not on that scale at all. But overdevelopment and one's opinion of overdevelopment is obviously objective. Uh, in my opinion, this does constitute overdevelopment. I do know that obviously if the houses are built, they may be of the same scale as the houses opposite, but those houses opposite are, if you like, uniform in, 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 in the way they are uh, designed and, and the way they are built. It's completely different on the other side of that road uh, where that uh, fairly substantial house stands alone. Uh, so for those reasons, in, in terms of overdevelopment, I am going to move refusal, but obviously Nice. Yeah, so uh, again, uh, this was obviously a site visit and I was really pleased to go along again to see what a lovely house this was. Um, and actually what I thought was quite a hidden house, I mean I know the area quite well but I didn't know the house that size was there so um, I don't know how iconic it necessarily is and there was no certainly no uh, concerns raised by um, heritage on it. Um, what I will say is uh, I do agree with the planning report, I think um, it would um, it's not an overdevelopment. It would fit in with the character of the area, which is sort of traditional semis and standard detached properties of, of a similar size to the ones that are surrounding it. So I, I couldn't really see any grounds to refuse this, and, and I think I will be supporting this application. I actually have a lot of sympathy for, for Paul. Um, I, I think it probably does look like it's an overdevelopment. Dave. Thank you, Chair. The site visit was uh, very well worth uh, going to see. I couldn't call it an iconic building because you couldn't see it from the road to the head of it. But there again, it was a large, substantial building in a very large plot, as you can see. Uh, being divided into three, it will be larger, uh, if not the same as the majority of the properties in the close neighbourhood, so I don't think it would be anywhere near overdevelopment. The applicant and his agent did, did say to my question, we had lovely tokery trees in the back of the property, and I said it's a shame that they're going. Uh, they said, but the boundary fence and hedges are staying. Um, and that way they were quite substantial. 
and I think just that alone and uh, prevents a lot of problems that people would have because it really works at all, at all measures. As uh, Matt said, I, I can't see any reason why we need to refuse this at all. David? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just a very brief comment. I also went on the site visit and found it very illuminating. I was quite pleased to see a, a rather nice vintage Rolls Royce in the garage there. I don't think that's part of the development and we'll obviously have to go at some stage. And my only positive comment was that uh, I believe that development is fine, but I would have preferred it to be for two houses rather than three. But that is not is what's before us. And Despite the concerns of uh, my um, colleague Leslie Rennie and of course the residents of the area, I honestly don't believe we have a sustainable reason for refusing it, although I would much have preferred it to be for two houses rather than the three that are before us. Any other comments? Paul, did you want to move refusal? Yeah, after that I may not achieve a second, but I'll move it anyway. Um, <laughs> My reasons for uh, refusal of the proposed development have in regard to the number of dwellings proposed would result in an overdevelopment of the site taking into consideration their relationships with adjoining residential properties, specifically number 10 Green Lane. The development would result in an unneighbourly form of development and have a detrimental impact on the immunity of occupiers of neighbouring properties. The proposals are therefore contrary to policy HS4 Royal Duty. Thank you, Paul. Do we have a second, then? Thank you, Cathy. Can I have all those in favour of refusal? Those, in, in, those against refusal? <coughs> That's lost. Um, so the, uh, the officer's recommendation is to approve. So your proposal, do you have a second? All those in favour of the officer's proposal? And those against? That's carried. Thank you. Then we can move to agenda item 7, which is uh, Springfield 34 Goals Lane Newton. Uh, can we have a presentation, please, Matthew? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, this was a, a, an application that was subject to a member's site visit on Tuesday. This application seeks planning permission for the erection of one new detached dwelling together with a, with a detached garage adjacent to 34 Goals Lane. The site is located within the primarily residential area within which uh, new housing development is acceptable subject to the criteria set out in policy HS4. The site is large enough to accommodate an additional dwelling and although the application is submitted in outline with all matters reserved for subsequent approval, illustrative layouts and elevations have been submitted in support of the application which demonstrate how a dwelling can be satisfactorily accommodated having regard to the council's standards for relationships with adjoining properties and the criteria set out in policy HS4. The site does not constitute background development as it is proposed to build adjacent to the existing property at 34 Gorse Lane and not to its rear. Therefore, objections relating to policy HS10 are not material for considering these proposals. An earlier application over 30 years ago for the erection of a detached bungalow was refused on this site and subsequently dismissed on appeal. Both decisions are now 30 years old and predate both the Council's Unitary Development Plan adopted in 2000 and the National Plan and Policy Framework which came into effect in 2012. Both of these planning policy documents are more supportive of the development of this site having regards to much more recent guidance and policy. In terms of access arrangements, the site would be accessed by an existing gate or access off Gorse Lane. Gorse Lane itself is a private, unadopted lane and the council has no control over the road in that regard. Due to the nature and condition of the lane, traffic speed and movements are already relatively slow and the impact that the development would have on highway and pedestrian safety has been assessed by the council's engineers who do not object to the proposals. Given that the proposed access is one that is already in place and could reasonably be used to give the infra access to the site now, 
The reason for refusal on highway safety grounds is not considered to be sustainable on the basis of one additional dwelling. Both planning and highway standards have changed since the refusal 30 years ago, and both pedestrian and vehicle safety has been considered and concluded to be satisfactory. Proposals are recommended for approval, and there is a qualifying petition of objection in relation to this application. Would the new petitioner like to come forward? If you could just press that silver button on the microphone to record your face, because your name and address <coughs> and any uh, half five minutes. Thank you. Uh, good evening, councillors. Um, thank you for finding the time to um, do a site visit. Uh, my name is John Bogwell. I live at number 30 North Lake West Curry. I represent 30 petitioners regarding this application. I have little knowledge of planning guidelines and law, but I do feel a duty to those I'm representing. I have taken advice from a planning consultant, highways consultant, and lawyer. Uh, my first point is access. Uh, Gorse Lane is a single track bridleway which has remained largely unchanged since the 1920s, and there have been no successful applications for new build properties in that time, apart from the redevelopment of existing bungalows into two story houses. On this site in particular, there was a previous application in 1984 to build a bungalow in the garden which was refused by the Council on grounds of access. This refusal was appealed to the Secretary of State for the Environment, and they in turn refused the appeal, stating the course line was inadequate to service any increase in traffic. Obviously, in the last 30 years, there are now far more cars than in 1984, and as such, I believe this view should be reinforced. The exit to this site is very dangerous and completely blind in a southerly direction, as it runs parallel with Gorse Lane with a high hedgerow separating the lane and the driveway. Anyone driving in a southerly direction down the lane could literally come across a car exiting the site and neither would know that the other was there. I believe it's literally an accident waiting to happen. Uh, my second uh, consideration is density. Uh, I've calculated the density of this application as 0.24. This is three times more dense than the mean density of the nearest six houses in the lane. It is also more than twice the density of most of the rest of the lane. If I may, as an example, use a recent application from Mr. Tom Fisher, who sought to build three houses in a plot fronting the course lane, Mr. Fisher's densities were in 0 0.28, 0 0.2, and 0 0.17. Your refusal of his application uh, would result in plot sizes which are significantly smaller than the prevailing plot sizes in the locality. They would therefore be detrimental to the character of the area and contrary to policy HS10 of the rural UGP. I have actually brought with me uh, a table of typical building densities for Gorse Lane, uh, if it would help us. Mr. Fisher also sought major access onto Gorse Lane, and this was also refused, but he would allow a pedestrian gate. In the Lappins case, there was historically a small pedestrian gate at the corner of the site, which was removed and replaced with a large driveway gate prior to them submitting their application. Clearly, there should be some consistency in policy. I believe what applies to Mr. Fisher must also apply to this development. The final area of objection is precedent. Now, Mr. Spilsbury made it clear in his report that this application is being discussed in isolation whereas our lawyer's advice is that planning should consider locations and not just individual sites. A copy of Mr. Cooper's letter to you all and hopefully have had time to read and consider the points that he raised. I do understand the pressures that the planners are under today. However, I think that if this one application was to succeed, it would undoubtedly open the floodgates for many more applications to follow, <coughs> completely changing what has always been a historical driveway. Sorry, driveway. Uh, if I may finish by quoting part of the uh, previous inspector's refusal, he stated that it may be better to set a limit now than wait as you suggest until its potential overall development has reached its absolute maximum. However, largely from the aspect of servicing, but also for the sake of all who may have cause to use it, I consider that course learning is not adequate to serve this further development. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Would the applicant or agent like to come forward?
just ask you to state your name and press the silver button on the bottom for the microphone is you. Uh, my name is Chris Jones from the KJP Architects. Um, we are the entity for this application. Uh, I'd like to start, thank the chair and members for the opportunity to speak in support of this application. I'd like to reply to the points raised by the objectors both this evening and during the consult consultation period and try to be as concise as possible in order not to bore you all the The objectors state that the impact of the proposed dwelling will be out of character with the area. Members of the committee visited the site on Tuesday and saw how the footprint of an illustrated building could easily be accommodated within this plot. All the separation of distance met with ease, thereby conforming with uh, the New Street Development Plan Policy SPG 11. The illustration scheme submitted indicates the footprint of a four bedroom house, the size of which is comparable to those other properties surrounding the application site. The footprint of block ratio is also similar to those in the locality, meeting policy, uh, the UDP policy HS4, with a plentiful amenity area and off road parking, thereby conforming with policy HS5, sorry, GL5. The character of the properties on Gorse Lane is held can only be described as a mixture of property styles and types. Therefore, the proposal would add to this mixture and arguably enhance the character of the locality, again complying with UDP policy HS4. The objectives have concerns regarding traffic on the old Maid Road and have commissioned the report from an independent library planner. The Council's Traffic and Transport Division have assessed and responded to, stating that they see no reasons to refuse the scheme. Therefore, the proposal conforms again with uh, policy HS4 of the UDP. The objectives have also voiced concerns regarding the impact on neighbouring properties. Yet, as pointed out earlier, the separation distances of UDP policy SPG 11 are met. Therefore, contrary to the objectors' points, the proposal will have no effect on neighbouring properties. Objectors have also have concerns regarding scale and massing. This, again, is a totally subjective view with no real basis. The illustrated layout conforms fully with the guidance contained within the UDP policies, HS4 and HS5, leading to required separation distances. And as the illustrated plan indicates, the proposed frontage line over that of the existing dwelling cannot be assumed that objectors insist that for the existing building line. Objectors have also raised covenants as a reason for objection, but as they are not covered by planning legislation, they have no bearing on the planning application for the tonight. The objectors have also pointed to an appeal decision on a proposal some 30 years ago, as I understand that this was due to high wage reasons, which is stated there that gave no cause for concern for this day. Objectors have raised other objections regarding backland development, which does not apply to this proposal. They also state the proposal is over development, which it plainly is not. They also state that the proposal of approval could set a precedent, which in itself is no reason to refuse an application. The objectors then state that proposals would, have, uh, would impact on drainage and sewers, yet offer no evidence of such, and further state that the proposal would have an impact on trees, which, if the committee are minded to approve, will form part of the suggested conditions that will be attached to any approval. In conclusion, the recommendation of the planning's professional planning offices is that the application be granted as it conforms with and meets the requirements of Royal UDP policies SPG 11, HS4, GR5, SPD2, and advice contained within the National Planning Policy Framework regarding good design and sustainability. I fully concur with their recommendation and would respectfully request that this proposal be granted approval this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would the Lord Council like to come forward? If you could just state your name, please. Councillor Jeffrey Watt, West Kirby and Thurston Board. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to the members for coming out on the site visit on Tuesday. Um, you may recall that as we were leaving, I asked you to note the general ambience of this very nice, quiet, secluded lane. Um, the access to the property, which as you've heard, has been newly created, and the position of the existing house and the plot itself in relation to the lane. Um, thank you also for listening to